Welcome back to the Vandy Sports Podcast. I'm Joey Dwyer. Obviously not here from Vegas, but here nonetheless after Vanderbilt's 84 to 78 loss to NC State. Turnovers, poor three-point shooting, DJ Burns, and a 17 to 2 run, as well as even more turnovers. Plague Vanderbilt down the stretch here as it drops its first quad two resume building opportunity in Vegas. We'll have more on that, but first I want to mention our sponsor, the Wash House. Are you dreading laundry day? I know I certainly am. Is it stealing time to do the things you truly enjoy? Let the laundry professionals at the Wash House take care of that for you with two convenient locations in the greater natural area. Just drop off your dirty laundry. And our professional attendants can give you the back the one thing you can never have enough of, your time. Vanderbilt certainly could use more of that tonight. Within 24 hours, you can cert- you can pick up your nicely folded, fresh and clean laundry ready to be put away. Check out www.washhouseclean.com. Stop in today and get your time back. Vanderbilt went into this one with some excitement with some jubilance. It got Tyron Lawrence back finally. It finally got Van Allen Lubin back. It got Lee Dort back. Obviously didn't have Ezra Mignon, but had a lot of hope going into this one. It felt like Vanderbilt is finally closer to full strength. I think it was missing its most important player with Ezra Mignon, and we saw a lot of that. We'll talk more about that, but a day that started with Vanderbilt seeming, seemingly finding itself and finding some of its rotations and what they're going to look like Obviously, a day that ended in a way without as much excitement. Vanderbilt drops its first quad two opportunity, and it's not going to have a whole lot of those in non-conference play. Probably have another one tomorrow, either BYU or Arizona State. BYU would be quad one. Arizona State would be quad two if the season were to end today. I think Arizona State probably stays there. Maybe BYU falls to quad two once the schedule gets a little easier and the opponent's rankings aren't super high. But nonetheless, feels like Vanderbilt had an opportunity tonight and Kind of squandered it to a team that's probably a middle-of-the-pack ACC team. Felt like Vanderbilt was kind of outclassed at times in the second half. I think that two-big lineup really hurt Vanderbilt when it went to Van Allen Lubin and Lee Dort. That didn't work. Felt like the spacing was off. Felt like the transition defense was really poor with that lineup. Kind of a microcosm of that for me, and I mentioned this in the story, was that Evan Taylor, when he got the switch on DJ Burns, you think that's money. You think that's a bucket every time. But the floor wasn't spaced out well enough, and NC State's athletic wings were able to kind of collapse on Taylor. It was either a jump ball or a turnover there. And that's kind of where I look at that lineup and I'm like, wow, they don't really have much here. And that was on the back of two NC State possessions where it got wide open looks in transition. And it wasn't even like they were pushing the ball out super quickly. It just felt like they were a little bit more athletic and springy than Vanderbilt was at that point. And I think the lineup management down the stretch at that point was not my favorite thing in the world. JQ Roberts coming in with eight minutes left in the game for his first action. He did some really good things. I think Jason Rivera-Torres did as well. But seeing them kind of go to that ultra big lineup, take both guys off the floor, and put Comateros and Smith on the floor side by side, and then struggled with some of that size, I think he had kind of the two extremes there, and neither of them worked out super well, as evidenced by that 17-2 run that felt like it kind of ended this one. Vanderbilt was in striking distance, was in two points there. And after that run, Really didn't seem to have a whole lot of hope in this one. Cut it at the end a little bit in garbage time. Jason Rivera Torres made a huge shot that I know made a lot of people who had money on NC State angry, but Vanderbilt just couldn't couldn't break through in this game. And I think that run was kind of a microcosm of it. And a microcosm of their issues today was turnovers. Turned it over 19 times. NC State shot it 14 more times total than Vanderbilt did, 70 to 56. Another stat with 70 in it that I think is telling is that Vanderbilt has 70 turnovers a season as opposed to just 51 assists. That kind of tells you what you need to know about the way this offense has flowed thus far. You've seen teams around the country who are moving it side to side, getting good looks as a result of that. Feels like Vanderbilt has a little bit more over dribbling, has some trouble getting open looks. Don't want to harp on the negative as much tonight because I think there was a lot of positive. You saw Tyron Lawrence at times completely took over the game. I don't know if he's completely in game shape, but looked like the best player on the floor tonight. And if you're looking at Vanderbilt and how it was able to be in this game with NC State without Ezra Mignon, who I think it's, is its most important player. And you look at how Tyron Lawrence performed and how Ven and Lubin performed with 16-8, and eight, you look and say, wow, that's a really solid big three. And you think Vanderbilt can maybe get by with that moving forward. So not all negative tonight. I think two of its freshmen looked really good. Jordan Williams, for as much flack as he got publicly, I think made some really good decisions with the ball. And I don't know that Paul Lewis was capable of making those decisions tonight. Jason... Rivera Torres was good. J.Q. Roberts looked unbelievable on that play where he got hit in the eye. Um, Vanderbilt had some good signs tonight. I thought it defended okay. It out-rebounded NC State, if I remember correctly. I think 40-37, to 37, or it was the other way around, 40-37. to 37. So the rebounding, I think, has taken a step forward. NC State hasn't been a great rebounding team. 
but Vanderbilt has been pretty solid thus far this year, and that trend kind of continued tonight. I think it defended okay. I think it has to defend the line a little bit better. Stack has talked a lot about kind of toying with zones over the years. I think that was one of the better games in terms of what they were actually able to accomplish zone-wise. And when they when NC State went on that run in the second half, they kind of dropped out of that zone, which I think hurt it a little bit, putting Van Allen Lubin in one-on-ones with DJ Burns. And Burns was contained a bit today, uh, a little more than I was anticipating early, missed some shots around the bucket late. But putting Van Allen Lubin in a situation where he's got to guard on one-on-one with no help side, I think hurts him a little bit. And I think that's the guy who's got to play the most minutes. Dort didn't look to be completely in game shape today. Um, but it feels like he's the guy with the best body to guard him. He probably can't play all that many minutes, though. He, I noticed at one point was guarding with his hands a lot, which is a sign of fatigue and also a sign of a young guy trying to defend a guy like DJ Burns, who is huge. I don't know if Lee Dort's guarded many guys who are bigger than him throughout his life. So that was interesting to me. I think they did a nice job at times hiding Lumen in that zone and kind of using their length and athleticism to be able to create some havoc with that zone. Maybe Stack has found something there. I think this team is probably better equipped to play a zone than the teams in the past have been. Liam Robbins would have been a nice shot blocker at a zone, kind of on the back end. Jesse Edwards did that really well at Syracuse last year, but you have more length, you have more athleticism, and if you have injuries and you have guys trying to work back into game shape, maybe the zone is something you turn to down the stretch a little bit, and it feels like Vanderbilt maybe found something there. But I think a lot of the positives today, like I said, were negated by turnovers. They haven't moved it well. They haven't got good looks, and I think a lot of their poor three-point shooting, they actually got above 30%. They were below 30% for most of this game. I think they were shooting at like, what, 16% at the break, 12 a little before the break. Um, what I look at there is just like, if you can't move it well enough and get your feet in the paint, I feel like Tyron Lawrence was the only guy who was able to penetrate tonight and get in the lane. If they can't consistently get guys in the lane and be able to kick it out to their shooters, they're going to have a difficult time. I think Paul Lewis has to make better decisions. Also, noting with Paul Lewis, he had two fouls and Stack put him back in the game. That was interesting to me considering what he had said about Ezra Mignon after Presbyterian and seemingly being completely off the idea of putting a guy with two fouls in the game. To see him do that with Paul Lewis, the sophomore, rather than his fifth-year point guard against Presbyterian was interesting to me. Maybe that shows a little bit of a psychological change and I don't know. Interesting uh, move there by Stackhouse. I don't know that this was his best coach game. He's not the reason they lost this game. They got to shoot it better. They can't turn it over the way they did. But that run was uh, an interesting practice of lineups there. I think he's a good X's and O's guy, but tonight I disagree with some of the moves he made, which I guess at times is why I'm here and why he's in Vegas coaching the team. So take that for what it's worth. But Interesting night for Vanderbilt. I think it showed a lot of positive signs. Tyron Lawrence being able to spearhead the offense and get in the lane like that and really dominate the game early on and keep them in the game when no one else was above, what, four points. He had something like 15 points. He was tremendous tonight. They really missed him, and he is such a difference maker. So Tyron Lawrence being back is huge. Van Allen Lubin showed you why Vanderbilt was so bullish on him out of the portal. He was a guy who, even with DJ Burns in the game and some athletic NC State bigs, he was able to make some plays and rebound it a bit, um, made some plays around the bucket, which I think was really nice to see, especially this back to the basket, not just out of the pick and roll. And he'll be even more equipped out of the pick and roll to be able to do it with Ezra Mignon playing point guard. So when Ezra Mignon comes back, maybe tomorrow, since he was a game time decision tonight, felt like even more of a game time decision than normal. I think they got a chance to really do some good things. And it's so hard to evaluate this team without them being at full strength. So. Vanderbilt loses 84-78 to 78 to NC State in a game where it felt like there were some positive signs. Like I said, Evan Taylor was a guy I haven't mentioned yet. He had some shots, and maybe the most encouraging thing was with him was that he was able to get to the mid-range, get to his spots, and rise up a little bit off the dribble. That was a really encouraging sign to see from him. I think Vanderbilt had a lot of those entirely, but didn't defend the three-point line well enough. It really hasn't done that super well throughout its first four or five games. Uh, two teams have shot at above 50% and NC State made eight on 42% shooting today. So that's something where I'm looking. Uh, rebounding, I think, has taken a step forward as opposed to last year, and that was one of my big concerns. I think they're better equipped to rebound than I thought they were. So that's something. And then maybe once they get Ezra Mignon back, uh, it's a little bit of a different tune after these games. Certainly not the tune of some of the games previously. I think Vanderbilt showed some good signs tonight. So ultimately fell short because of that 17-2 run because of turnovers and because it didn't knock down shots early enough. Put some guys in bad spots defensively just because of what NC State can do to you matchup-wise, but 
Not a terrible loss for Vanderbilt. Let's see what it's got tomorrow and see if it can leave Vegas. One and one, I think that's imperative for this group. It needs to capitalize on some resume building opportunities because its numbers have dropped so much. I would expect it to drop not a whole lot tonight because they covered and it was a power five team, but probably a little bit. So got to make up some ground tomorrow. What better way to do that than with a quad one or a quad two win? We'll see how this goes moving forward, but Vanderbilt's got a real opportunity tomorrow night. I don't think the third place game should be scoffed at when you're looking at a resume building opportunity this early in the year. So big one tomorrow for Vanderbilt. Hopefully for its sake, it has Ezra Mignon and we get to see how to evaluate this team fully. I think it still has some guys that aren't fully in game shape, but it's got a chance to kind of show what it has tomorrow and to an extent show that tonight. So thank you guys for watching. God bless. Happy Thanksgiving. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow night. Peace.